This is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me, as always, halfway across the world, it's Jared Morgan. G'day, folks. How you going? I don't know if it's uh, this weekend for you, Jared, because I know that you people down under sometimes get the holidays all wacky, but it's Happy Father's Day out there here in the uh, stateside. <laughs> yeah, not Father's Day here. I think Father's Day was earlier in the year for us. Okay. Um, or it's or it's later in the year. I think Mother's Day was early. I think Father's Day September here. Yeah, I, I think like yours. Me. Yeah, that's right. So I think I think your Mother's Day lines up with ours, but the Father's Day is at the end mm, of summer. No. Yeah, yeah, that's or, right. Our end of our summer, so beginning of your spring. I don't know what it. Wackiness so with hemispheres. Are, <laughs> dates, dates are hard. Dates are hard, mate. <laughs> like, I you know, I was trying to line up a a, a um. A meeting time for someone else at work and they were over in like i think other central um mm, in yeah. the us and like they were going oh so do any of these times work and they were all in you know see uh, like uh central time um and i went i, I have no idea <laughs> <I> <laughs> go to a world time <laughs> clock and plug in those times then like like compare the, the the different date ranges and stuff and and then like i went okay i think these dates and i put like a little box around them I think these dates and times will actually sort of line up. And it's yeah. like, oh, man. It's just so hard. What a nightmare. What a nightmare. Yep. It's all, yeah. too, all too difficult. Um, mm. Hey, folks, look what I'm wearing. I, I got my, my, my Star Wars. I was about to compliment you on your shirt. Pinball shirt, shirt that I got from Zen for winning the, uh, the first contest that they had run, yeah. uh, which was the comment contest. And, yes, I did get slippers. They don't Very fit my feet, nice. though. They're my heel goes right to the edge. So these are now going to become my wife's slippers um, if yeah. she wants them. But they're, they're I mean, these it's, are like it, the total disposable hotel. They are the, they're the hotel ones for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Use, use them once those and uh, that's about the end of the life cycle on them. <laughs> they'll just be, they'll be displayed somewhere in my house. Because obviously, as you see, I don't have a Star Wars t-shirt and I did happen to win the, the competition last time on... Yes. Uh, uh, for, for all the awesome pinball junk that I've got lying around my house. So um, I'm sure that that is speeding speeding its way uh, down to me on the slow plane from the US. It, it's <laughs> rather sad. In, in one respect, I feel like we should be disqualified from these contests because uh, yeah. of our connection with Zen. But then on the other hand, um, the, the folks, there's not that many people entering. <laughs> no, I could say because I was following the Flipper Fam hashtag on Twitter for the you know cool pinball swag stuff. I think it was like me and two other people who submitted entries for it. Yep. So chances of me winning were pretty high. Like there was I, a, there I was a time odds. where we ran a contest and we had one entry. Yeah, so they won. <laughs> they won. <laughs> they, they, they really won. They were the best of the best entries. Yes. Um, so I don't know, folks, uh, if you, we, we, it's getting interesting. Um, if you follow Arcuda on Twitter, they've been <laughs> like the Chiquita. They have been rising from the dirt and coming up with a myriad of tweets. And I'm not sure where exactly they're going with this, but I think mm -hmm. we need to take a look at some things that are popping up on their Twitter feed. What say you, Jerry? Yeah. I, I would love to do this because I've been <laughs> I've been seeing their b Twitter bursts and I don't understand they're, what they're trying to achieve. I don't know, but there's some smack talking going on basically, Whoa. and I love it. <laughs> there, there's lots of there's lots of uh, I know there's lots of um, copyright infringement talk. Well, that's what that's um, what, what this is mostly going to be about. So check this out, folks. I'm going to bring up their mm. uh, their Twitter feed here, right? And a lot of it is talking about how they they keep on getting copied. Okay? Mm. And a prime example of this is, obviously, <clears throat> over here we have the Arcuda logo, right? Yeah. And then they're also part of Highway Games. That's their sister company. Yeah. And then what they're pointing out is, look at this company, Homing Game Entertainment, just basically... Super legit, you're right? You know, totally just swiping. <laughs> was... But the thing is, and this is a problem, right? They don't have any brand recognition nope. anywhere else apart from Australia. And um, to be honest, the brand recognition here in Australia is low as yep. well. So this is why these companies can just go, hey, 
Let's just yeah. let's just so, do a so Voltron on this, your logo. That's where this stuff kind of starts, <clears throat> and then it goes into. And I had no idea about this thing. I've never seen this kind of thing. No, um, this is a big. It's big, this giant. Uh, where's a where's a good image? It's this giant fishing game. I, I mean, probably what eight players around yeah. this table, or whatever. Yeah. And they're talking about how basically the these they've gone and copied it. These. Asia, I don't, I don't know where in Asia, but these Asian companies have gone out, straight up copied it, um, like down to everything and selling it at bargain basement prices. Well, well, here's what they're doing though: it's <clears throat> it's bargain basement prices that then they can't actually deliver upon. Mm. And so basically, what they do is they're throwing a distrust, a baited in, line, right? Uh, see what uh... I did there. <laughs> But it winds up, it winds up, everybody looks at, oh, well, hey, let's go for this cheaper thing. And then when they try and order it, it can't be delivered. But by that point, the damage has already been done and the company doesn't want to then deal with Arcuda. So they're actually, they're doing like, um, Arcuda used a term for that. It was like a, um, not like a machine, not like a bait and switch, but it was almost like a, they, they basically, by doing this, they, they're cheapening the Arcuda brand. Right by by not being able to fulfill and giving people a bad experience so the akuda even though it's not akuda in the logo and everything the association between that logo which is quite distinct Oops. like that logo there with the the ring around it right. and everything that, that looks quite distinct so therefore people see so. this have a bad experience and go oh you know i don't like this company this company right. is no so good. this is what they're saying this is what like an ad is is it's advertising yeah. it for 1600 when normally it was selling for 3000 um yeah. and then it, it you know but they can't yeah here we go they so they're, they're saying true price was almost four thousand dollars um yeah. And then the people are being informed that the project is not good and they were clearing the dead stock, basically declaring that the game was dead even though it wasn't. So it's mm. just kind of... But anyway, as you can see, a copious amount of tweets. <laughs> Trying to do what exactly? I don't like? know, but I'm I'm dying to know where it's going because they keep, oh. on, they keep on teasing. We're going to get to the pinball talk. I really wish they'd hurry up because I'm getting bored with right. the competitive <laughs> advantage stuff that they're putting out there. Like, but it needs one of, to. Wrap one up. of the things that we've noted a long time ago when we saw the at games machine was, boy, it had a lot of things from Arcuda. Oh yeah, including all those Gottlieb games. That was designed that because that view did not exist for anything but Arcuda. For what, oh, they're, they're for what special Farsight was doing. package. Yeah, the, yeah the, that's the, right. The, the, the top, yeah, the Arcuda uh, with... Pinball Arcade. Also, the Pinball Arcade, right, right. Mm. So obviously they can't include any of the Williams Bally stuff, but they've had all the Godleap stuff, but that was all done with Arcuda's help. And so I'm just, I'm like, I'm wondering, is this going to get, is this going to get juicy? Is this going to get nasty? I don't know. So... Oh, so you're, you, you reckon that what we're seeing in at games is actually the same the same stuff that was in the Arcuda Pinball Arcade. Well, package. so again, this is where Arcuda's got a problem. They never got their product out to market, right? Mm -hmm. But they were talking about replaceable game panel right on the apron that has joystick oh, yeah. and buttons. Mm -hmm. What does that games come out with? You know, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of similarities. Connectivity with consoles and other things that you can put on your thing. Well, well they've got a... uh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. So they've got a variety of that. That's basically. why I'm. That's why I'm curious. I'm. I'm. I'm wondering if they're building themselves a case to go there. Here's the thing, kind of again. If you don't got a product out there, it doesn't matter. Yeah, because you got nothing Ad to Games protect. has a product out there. At Games has proof of concept that hey, we've got something. It's shipping to customers. It's in customers' houses, and it's working. So yeah, where are you? <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah. right. That, like, so this is they... this is why I'm very curious to know where this is going and if they're going to even have a leg to stand on when push comes to shove. I don't know. Again, I'm just I'm reading the tea leaves and seeing what direction their like what their ultimate goal seems mm. to be because they keep on teasing home arcade product which we looked at yeah. that one time with that mercury cabinet right yeah which again similar to well, yeah where is it but it's in design phase 
it's been around for a while, and it l- takes the the Legends uh, arcade cabinet takes a lot of cues from that. Um, mm. So I'm just curious to know where it's where it's going with it. It's it, yeah, it's going to be they they're definitely building to something, and it feels like they're laying out the runway for them to either do something big or something so <laughs> we, we'll just have to go along for the ride i think and yep. work out what's going on with our cuda and now see what's happening speaking of at games this is gonna be fun folks because jared mm-hmm. doesn't know any of this information <laughs> i have so not seen what we're about to talk about yet yes yeah, so we're gonna get we're gonna get some genuine um, uh, reaction from jared but uh, okay so essentially here's the deal at games announced Finally, the Tato Pinball that was teased a while ago Mm -hmm. Um, and what those tables are going to be. And they've got imagery of what those are going to look like. And I thought, well, hey, we just did this with uh, Zen, with Noir, and uh, to be yet named Pirates of the... uh, Pirates of the Green Hills. Right. (laughs) 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 Um, So I thought that, hey, why why not do the same thing? We, I mean, we obviously couldn't, can't play those yet either. So mm. let's take a look at these and you know see what the layouts are like and what the art package is like and what's good, what's bad. Um, yeah, and I'm down for that. Go for that. Go from there. Okay. So uh, first things first, Jared. Hmm. Who do you think made these tables for at games? <sighs> okay. So, I don't think it's Farsight. Um, I think it might be the VPX community. You are correct that it is not Farsight. And on that front, I think we can officially close the door on Farsight and Pinball. Yep, Maybe that's done. it. It's bye there, bye, done. R.I.P. You're you're out of the you're out of the game completely. Farsight is no longer a producer of digital pinball tables. No. It is, however, Magic Pixel. Magic Pixels are doing the dare. Yeah. This might not suck then. <laughs> <laughs> Magic Pixel has gotten the, uh, gotten the go-ahead. Yeah, so I'm excited for Magic Pixel to go this route. And this is great. I think once you see the imagery, you're going to recognize the Magic Pixel art style very much. Okay. Okay. Lay so it on me. Let's, let's take a look. Here we go. The first... Of the Tato tables that uh, they're creating a pinball for, it's for a little game called Darius, or Darius, I'm not sure. Oh, great shoot 'em up It looks a little something like that. Oh, okay. Okay, let me uh, full screen. That's a very, boy. a very um, classic 80s layout. Isn't it, though? No. They call it a street-level play field, they call that, you know? Right. Um, lots of very, very bright colors, which mm-hmm. fits in with the 80s vibe um, of it. Got a nice little horseshoe up the um, the top left of the play field. Horseshoe up here, yeah. Looks like um, they've got stand-up targets everywhere on it. Now, no drops. I am not showing you the back glass. It has okay. reels. So this is an EM. This is an EM. This looks like an EM. It looks like an EM. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let me see if I can zoom in on this. And that's good for Magic Pixel for the first couple they're releasing because that should Oops. be easy enough to do. do. That should do be that. easy enough to do art for, um, and uh, rules. Sorry, um, for because I have to make their own rules. Okay, so there I got it nice and big. Let's take a look. Yeah, okay, so good. here we go down at the bottom. Um, obviously, we've got a very long return lane uh, for in lanes. Yeah, the... we've got the in lanes. You've got this interesting little. Uh, Loopy thing. Loopy thing over there, which again, that's a very classic EM style uh, mm. thing. Uh, classic insert lights going on here. Looks like we have yep. a light, e- light extra ball inserts over here. We've got a third flipper, which is not necessarily an EM thing. No, not normally. So we're doing a little bit of difference, but obviously that's to shoot these stand-up targets over here. Um, which advances whole score as the right. play field. The thing that I like about what they've done here so far, Chris, is they've really kept that like EM style where all the instructions are on the play field. Yes. Yes. That's really 
nice that they've actually gone with that pattern. Yes. Um, two pop bumpers. Classic yep. uh, three rollovers, three at, the rollovers top. at the top. Like you said, you've got this horseshoe that looks like it's only accessible from this uh, mid flipper. Uh, we've got a saucer, capture saucer, that I'm assuming is progressive for yep. scores. Looks, like, looks it. like it kicks it out to here. Once you kick it to yep. your flipper, once you can loop around. You know, so looks that's... like the oh yes, so the horseshoe is one direction only because they've got the um the directional. Oh, gate you're right. At the it's top. got a gate right there. Mm -hmm. So you can only shoot that horseshoe from that upper flipper. Yep. Yep. Um. So anyway, that's a pretty classic design right there. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that's looking good. I, I reckon shabby, that would right? shoot well. I, that'd shoot well. I reckon. Yeah. Okay. All right. Nice. So there's Darius. Let's take a look at the next one, shall we? Which is, oops. If I can get it to. Where's the there, There's the arrow, there's the arrow. All right, this is Frontline. <clears throat> Never heard of that game. Never heard sure. of this game. This uh, just looks like a very flat version of Bonsai Run, but. Um... Okay, so <laughs> that's your, you know what I, my first impression was, was Genie. Oh, yeah. I'm just more looking at the colors and the and the feeling of, that I get from it. At first mm -hmm. look at like I can see what she's saying with Genie with the upper playfield. Yeah, but that but that I mean, um, this this upper playfield right here that is full on Genie. Oh yeah, that's full on Genie. That is for sure full on Genie. Um, yeah. Other than I don't know the Genie has I don't know this flipper is weird. That looks really bizarre. That is that placement. is that like a stationary flipper? Like it's not an active no. flipper. That, that's an active flipper, but they really think put because a there's a location. there's a screw right here. So it's not yeah, like it, this is going to be able to go underneath that. There's rubbers that I see. No, that's the that's the bottom position of that flipper, and then it will flip up. Just so it'll actually, flip? Act that's weird. It's really bizarre. Like, I bizarre. would not have designed it like that. You can see why they've done it though. Let's have a look at the the two, um, the horizontal, but the vertical pieces of plastic. They're right, both the right same there, length. Right there. So mm -hmm. really, what they probably wanted wanted to do is put the flipper up higher, but then they have that path coming out of the return lanes at the top. Yeah, and they couldn't quite do that. What well, what they should have done is they should have worked. Uh -oh. Yeah, they should have grouped yeah. the two flippers closer together and moved them down, like okay. that, and so they're equal because that's going to really. We're having screw up your geometry on the field. Isn't that fun? Like, then... okay, we're, we're we're having some issues with you, Jared. <laughs> you, you, yeah, we, we, we had two strange stutters, internet, folks. Yeah, we had two stutters. Yeah. So hopefully, so... Jared's uh, stuff will pick up but um now it is interesting to note these return there were the rollover lanes up here looks like it's a hard mm. piece of plastic feeds directly to this flipper here this is an interesting little horseshoe it looks like yeah that's gonna go behind that drop target bank yeah there's a path behind the drop oh yeah you're right bank, so yeah. it's gonna feed to over here which probably yep. gonna roll over feed to there which yeah and then go back down to Goes back your out to lane. Oh, your return lanes again. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's where it's gonna go. Right. Okay. Um again. Again, art style great. Yeah, art style's really great. It, it very much captures uh an EM style uh that era of just vibrant, colorful. Um Yeah. Uh, the I, artwork is good too. Like I like the the style that they've used here. Look at that mm -hmm. bonus count, that's Farfella right there. Um, oh, this the, right the, here. The bonus, the bonus curve, like mm -hmm. that, is definitely a foul follower, I think, mm -hmm. or like, yeah, the butterfly table. Yeah, I'd um, be very curious if anybody can identify if these are partial reskins of anything, if they're taking influence from any Gottlieb's out there, if they're just uh, redoing any of their. It doesn't look like redoes of any of the Zachariah that I know of. And, no, these look like unique designs. Yeah, and and folks, just just for the record. Yes, we say Zachariah around here. I don't know who this Zacharia business is, but uh -uh. Uh, even in the one of the games, when their their speech says Zacharia or Zacharia, not Zacharia. I don't know. It's, it's, no, it's I've not noticed Zacharia. that a few. Uh, I've noticed the few that they do Zacharia, and I'm like Zacharia. <laughs> it's Zacharia. Um. All right. Anyway, side note, tangent. Just had to go there. Mm. All right. Mm. So that's Frontline. Let's uh, get off of our Zoom I, so we can... I don't even know where what that game is. I don't either. Most... I mean, I shouldn't say most. There's quite a few no. of these 
uh, Tato games that I have no clue what they are. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, next, Rastan Saga. That sounds familiar to me, but I don't quite know what the game's about. I have heard that name before. Um, yeah. But... It would yeah, have been okay. nice if if at games had of you know taken the glass off so that the Legends pinball logo wasn't reflected. <laughs> hey, at least you know it's actually recorded on the <laughs> on the, the machine. Yes, that is on the true. machine. That is so true. that's neat. That is true. All right, so let's do a little uh, zoom in on this and see what we see here. So, okay, I like the fact that they've gone with that sort of like in the just above the. Uh, The mesh look um, that they did on some of the other games. Hold on, is there it's like the silk screening look, right? There um, we go. For like a, a different texture. I don't mm-hmm. know the name of that. Uh, you know what I'm saying? That sort of like dot mask that they put over it. Yeah, yeah, that it's, shadow it's, mask. It's it's the four color. It's, it's got a name. I just can't remember the I name. I know, and I can't remember it either. But uh, it's definitely what was done back in the yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, but that's like, really cool. Again, that's layers. really authentic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. here it looks so like it looks we've like got... Above the head there. Drop targets here. Drop targets here. Drop targets here. Looks like there's drop targets right two here. Two drop targets here. there. Yeah. And then we're going another two pop bumpers. Again, another upper flipper. Is that a... More drop targets. Yeah, more drop targets here. Is that? Do you think is that a saucer? It doesn't look like a saucer. No, it's not a saucer. It's a it's an insert. Ooh, that's a weird shot to try and get your ball to, because that's the only way that it's going to get there is from presumably your left flipper, right? Yeah, that's a tight shot. That's a tight shot, and it's gonna. There is no rubber right here, so it might do a nice soft thud, and then. Or it could be there could be a hidden source underneath there or something. Yeah, maybe a magnet, possible. Hmm. Uh, The only way to get over to the rollovers is you're going to do a right flipper shot up into this. Yeah. Um, I assume your maybe your pop bumpers are going to do a nice kick over there. Yeah, I think your pop bumpers will probably feed that um, that upper right flipper. Mm -hmm. um, Probably. So you can get a shot on. It'll just flop over there, but it won't be. It'll be a bit of a. It'll be interesting to see how that one flips. From yeah. like getting that ball up there, it's a tight shot. That's real tight. That's laser. So it is kind of interesting one. that they're picking, they're doing real reels scoring on this huh. EM, but these feel very much like early solid state. With that Does, many drop targets, yes, that would yeah. be early solid state. This feels solid state, so it's kind of a, interesting that they chose to go the EM scoring route rather. Than I think going, I know why. So they're either going to do one or two things with the sound. They're going to actually have chimes or they're going to have that really early crossover when they had like the like early solid state, but they still had real. So it would be like beeps and boops okay. um, for the sound effects, I think. Well, Unless they're going to go and completely like bridge generations and actually have sound effects and speech and reels and weird sort of like pseudo I 70s, 80s layout. I think that's what's going to be because uh, you'll see the next table uh, has exactly what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. So our next table for this current pack is Space Invaders. Space Invaders. Okay, Space there's a ramp. Space Invaders. We're actually off the play field. Okay, there's a whole, there's a couple of differences on this one. Uh, this is the one that they actually had video of the game okay. running. Okay, uh, so you could hear the sound. It's using the sounds from the game, from okay. Space Invaders. Okay, so it's definitely using all of those. Uh, okay, the cool. other difference is this is being treated like a DMD game, in terms of it's got a DMD. Oh. Okay. Okay. Um, that being said, it's. Zacharias DMD, where it's either scores or some fireworks, and that's the extent of mm. DMD animations. Um, that's a shame. Which Look has not that gone slipper. that has not gone well over on the uh, the Facebook page for no <laughs> that game. that's slack. Um, I, I can bet because I wouldn't be happy about that either. Yeah. That's that's just so a bit you're right. Lazy. Interesting flipper position over here on the left. The flipper looks like it's a gate for the outlane. Kind that's of really. Right? Oh, I can see what it's shooting for. It's shooting for that target over just on the right. over there. And that, yep, because you can't glance that from the from a late left flipper shot. You'd have to shoot from that. 
I think you're right, because I would wind up hitting the slingshot instead. Yeah, you'd be too late. You wouldn't be able to get angle on it. But so, you're right, there's because there's the uh, the post is right here. It's touching the post. Yeah. So that's kind of an interesting aspect. And have a look at the characters. Like, there's two characters that look like they're standing on the play field, and they've got things above them. And they are. Okay, got, so like, there's also some animated characters. They're tiny. Um, yeah. And from what I could tell was they were just moving forward a little bit, and then they'd disappear. And then they'd move forward a little bit and disappear. And oh. similarly, there were some characters, if we come up top here, that look like this monster uh, that were coming down a little bit. So what I find interesting about this is oh. they didn't go with what you would think of as space invaders. Um, with like... Right. If my my initial thought for Space Invaders, and I was kind of shocked, was I expected a whole bank of insert lights up here. Yeah. Uh, almost like almost like Pinbot, that you would have to you know the the, yep. the matrix grid, and that you'd be having to hit a bank of targets up top and to knock out the invaders. That's what mm, what I had thought would you know yep. this would be. Um, and that's not the case at all. So I find that really kind of interesting that they went a completely different route. Once you know, again, the, ignoring the video game, just like Bally did the with other their thing, Space Invaders. <laughs> well, because I kind of have to. The, well, yeah. um, well, <laughs> but the thing that's interesting, and they could have done this approach with Space Invaders too, had a whole row of drop targets, mm -hmm. like at the top, like spaced out like invaders, mm -hmm. and you could sharp shoot those drop targets. That would have been satisfying as hell if they mm -hmm. did that. Because uh, I love a good drop target, like you know, and that would be great yeah. to shoot at. So we've got stand-up targets over here on the left. Yeah. Uh, we've got this lane that goes underneath this ramp that I'm assuming feeds. Where is that going? So, Somewhere. I don't know where that. I don't goes. know where that lane goes. I um, can't see it. It's covered by the ramp. Yeah, I don't know where that goes. Obviously, we've got a ramp up here that feeds into this wire form that goes all the way down, feeding back to your left flipper. We've got a second ramp that's obviously hit by this upper flipper, uh, comes around what, and drops into... Go? I don't know what that is. What is is that, that a... Like, there's no rollovers. No, but there aren't. What, what does that do? Is that like an upper play field we just can't see the transparency on or something? No, like is... no. It's it's because this is... This that's is your... Level. That's where your, your rubber would be, right? Unless it's magnets or... Because or, he's going to just drop the ball right here. And just plop down. And plop what, down what almost like a center drain. I have no idea. That is weird. And you saw gameplay of this, right? They have gameplay available. There is gameplay video available of this, yes. Anything of that area? Do they show anything about what's I, going I, on I didn't, there? I didn't notice. Um, I didn't study it too, too hard. Um, hmm. I don't know. And then obviously we have this ramp here that feeds this flipper. Yeah, and that, which then will allow you to do a cross play field shot to that other right. ramp, which will feed the weird no rollover targety area right. thing up there. Right. Okay. That's going to so, have to translate into some sort of gameplay element because that doesn't make sense just looking at it. So, again, you notice though, it's still a relatively flat presentation. It's Firepower era play field right. layout. Right. Firepower 2, actually, yeah. play field layout. Yeah. So here's what I want to point out with these, and I'm going to uh, let me just cycle through back to the beginning of these. Mm -hmm. Okay, so take a look at these, and just tell me your visually looking at this whole thing, Jared. What does your mm -hmm. eye do? Do these feel very flat to you? Yeah, that that one okay. in particular has no. No real feeling of dimension to now, it. Now, does that remind you of something Farsight did? <laughs> and I've mentioned it already. Um, you might have to remind me because Genie, <laughs> it's when when Genie first oh, came out, Genie. it was so brightly. There's there's no shadow. There's no contrast. There's no depth. It's just this That's completely true. flat look. Now, and I brought it up here just to show you they did improve it eventually. Yeah, they put some they, light and shade on it. Right. They darkened this middle section up a little bit, let the lights take a little more center stage. Um, yeah. So here we can see. Let me zoom in on this just so we can see the difference and how close that front line. Oops. Uh, there we 
we go on this upper play field. So, okay. So yeah. the difference is it, it's a little bit wider. It gets fed by the pop bumper here. We've got yep. the two flippers here, but that top is definitely similar. This flipper over here is definitely similar. I yep. think that's about where the similarities end though. Yep. Like that, if you take a look at that one and you compare that to their take on that upper left play field. Yeah. It, it's genie all the way from a design perspective. Like right. that makes a lot more sense. It's symmetrical. Right. Uh, it feels better yeah. to shoot because, you know, we play genie plenty of times. Mm -hmm. We know how it feels. So, you know, it's got a much better feel to it. So it'd be really awesome. This is lessons that I would like Magic Pixel to apply, which is mm. uh, darken some things up so that your lights pop a little more, put more detail on your pop bumpers, and that they're not the same detail all the way around, but there's actually, you know, you can see a little bit darker, and then it starts getting brighter as it's coming around. Um, yep. There's detail on the flippers where there's, you know, you can see texture um, yep. on the flippers. Everything's and that's a bit flat. That's a big thing is adding texture. Look at the rollover buttons. You know, they, they added the highlight. That highlight wasn't there originally when Farsight made this. Um, well, that's not technically a rollover, but I get what you're saying. Like the inserts you, have right, a bit you know of dimension. I mean? it, it just gives, because these are really flat tables no matter what. They are, yeah, and when you go sure. And when you go with a top-down view on them, uh, it's really going to make them them feel that way. Yeah. So hopefully uh, that's something that uh, maybe they can learn their lesson on, but I don't know. Um, uh, hopefully. All right. So now the next bit of news, pricing. Mm. How much do you think, Jared? Uh, how many tables you get? Four. Okay. What about, let's go four bucks a table. Okay. So... 16 bucks for the pack? 16 ish, yeah. The answer is $25. So that's And it's like coming out July 4th. It's six, six bucks a table. Six bucks a table for EMs. Mm, little steep. High. Little steep. That's <clears> uh, <throat> some of that yeah. game's pricing going on right there. Um, that's basically the Magic Pixel price mm -hmm. plus the At Games premium. Mm hmm. And I'm yeah. seeing a lot of people say, well, there's licensing. Huh. If only there was another company that did licensing and put out table packs. Oh, gee, that'd be so interesting to compare prices on. <laughs> mm, wouldn't it, though? <laughs> wouldn't it, though? Um, yeah. So 25 bucks for this pack comes out July 4th. There's going to be three packs in total. We can take a look so at the... 12, uh, 12 games. Yeah, so we can take a look at the next pack, which will be Operation Wolf, Zookeeper, Chack and Pop. Never heard of that one. What? I know. <laughs> What's that? And uh, Elevator Action. Elevator. Well, that's some good themes in there, except for Chuck and Pop, whatever that is. Yeah, I've never heard of that one. No idea. Um, that's coming out, I guess it's coming out on Owner's Day, uh, whatever day that's going to be uh, in the fall, yeah. in autumn. Again, 25 mm -hmm. bucks for that pack. Uh, and there's no imagery for these i no awesome I went, I went and found the imagery <laughs> and mm. after that we have thanksgiving here so late november for those of you that uh, don't have you know aren't in the states it's gonna be the legend of cage rainbow islands bubble bobble and arkanoid now arkanoid that one dude that needs five billion drop targets Oh yeah, just everywhere. Like, <laughs> just yeah, just and like four rows of drop targets that you got to pound through. <laughs> absolutely, like that's that's what you need there. Um, even I mean, they wouldn't do this, but they could really like have fun with that. If Zen was to do that, they would make that very very unrealistic, <laughs> and they would actually put like like drop targets, but. Well, they would be you, more reflective of the level design in Arkanoid. If you is, think about like, it, Zen has done... Well, they, they haven't done Arkanoid. But they have played with the mechanic of uh, on Doom and on Rebels. And I'm not sure if there's a, a third one. But where you're moving a character across the bottom with your flippers. Yeah. Ball's hitting and you're trying to hit 
targets to knock them down. Yep. Um, Very much like even, the shadow play field. Even in uh, Alien Isolation, there's a mini game that is exactly Arkanoid. Mm. Yeah, you know, where you're breaking the uh, uh, you're hacking when you do hacking mode. So I would that at the very least, I expect some kind of that mechanic to go on. Otherwise, it's not. It's like, not Arkanoid. You can just basically, yeah, because otherwise you're just slapping Arkanoid art on a pinball table, right. and it's not going to carry forward. They they could do great things with that. And the thing is, Magic Pixel have got the chops to be able to do it. Yeah, they know clearly from these playfield designs, like barring the fact that they're a little bit flat at the moment. Yeah. They know how to make bespoke tables. Probably definitely better than Farsight did with their own creations. Well we like we like their EMs. They're, they're really, really good. good at EMs. Yeah, so they are. I'm and and from what people are saying, I don't know if the physics have made their way to PC that they're talking about, but they've a lot of people that are owners of of the at games products and have the Zacharia packs have said that the physics had gotten improved recently and they're really, really good. All um, right. So, I mean, I got no issue. I'm, I'm happy for magic pixel that they're yeah. getting, uh, getting this opportunity, um, being a this person is to do right, something. They made the right choice here. Mm-hmm. Like at games picked the right vendor yeah. here to do this work. So good on them for, yeah. for, Selecting the right vendor here. because again, I think that uh, that Magic Pixel understands this era of art very style. well. Yeah. Oh, very very well. They've got this. They've got this for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So here's my question, though, Jared. Mm. Okay. Now we've seen the pricing. Yeah, we've seen the tables. We've seen the tables. Where's the outrage? The outrage? Yeah. Well, I mean, come on. This is exclusive. It's only available through the Ad Games Legends store. and On their it, hardware. On their hardware. It's not going to be available on PC. And look at the price that they're charging. These are all things that everybody was giving Zen a real hard time about in regards to the Epic Game Store. <laughs> That's true. This is even more exclusive because this, the cost you of You've got to have a like, $700 piece of hardware to run it. Or, well, or you can get the Legends Arcade Gamer, you know... Lap Which would suck. deck. <laughs> Which would suck. Um, and it's not coming out to Allegedly. those stuff immediately. It comes out later for them. This is first going to Legends Pinball. Hmm. Um, Obviously. That's, but, yeah, but it, no, but it, it, it is interesting, though, reading the comments of people because everybody's just like, woo, take my money, I'm so happy. And there was zero outrage. And I'm like, yeah, well, what about me. all these, ma- you know, what about all the Magic Pixel customers that are happy with their games on console and happy with their games on PC? Well, how come they don't get it? Now, to be fair, <laughs> this is a smart thing that Ad Games is doing. They're not, yeah. they're, they're avoiding what people are doing with the Legends Arcade Cabinet being putting in a PC and then having, you know, FX3 playing on the cabinet. They're making yeah. it so you can't do that at all. But it's still interesting because talk about exclusivity and they can charge whatever the heck they want. Whatever they want. Yeah. Whatever they want. That's why they're 25 bucks. Why they're 25 bucks, which again, you figure, okay, they'll US. probably go on sale. Yeah. Oh yeah. The, the Canadians <laughs> are already going, I ain't paying 30 bucks for a pack. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay $40 yeah. for those. No, no, not $10 a table. Again, That's like again, $75 gets you 12 tables. So they give you like a, a fourth pack free. Oh no, hang on. No, because there are only three. So no discount. No discount. That's what I'm saying. So seventy five dollars gets you twelve twelve. Now, again, mm. do the math on what were the Zacharia packs selling for with and I don't know how many tables were included in each of those packs, but it was more than four. And they were charging mm. well, what was it, fifty bucks a pack? I can't quite remember. I think it was it 50 bucks a pack because there was four packs and it was much. totaling out at $200. Yeah, that was without the um, the owner's day discount that they yeah. had on release. Yeah. 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 That's right. So there's going to be a lot of people waiting for that discount. And that's the thing. The owner's day discount, if it's <laughs> half off, now we're at the price that it should have been. <laughs> yeah. Which is I a think trend that I noticed. On the fence. It's, it's a trend that I noticed with that game's pricing because I've seen mm. also a couple of videos of people reviewing the deck to add on to the the pinball machine and everybody's pretty much come down on the same line that we said 
If it was $100, yeah. But $200? Yeah, nah. Well, that's a bit steep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're asking a yeah. bit much. So, uh, I don't know. All in all, interesting. Yeah. It's, um, you're right. It's interesting that there's not that much rage going on about exclusivity. Um, but I think from the outset, the, you know, at games made it very clear that these would be exclusive to the platform tables. Sure. So maybe because that expectation was set so early on, people are going, oh yeah, okay. Well, they're just like delivering what they promised basically. Um, so as opposed to people making assumptions of what Zen would do based off of prior actions and then yeah. being butthurt over that. Yes, correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this brings in yet another wrinkle. Mm. And that is if App Games is getting in bed with Zachariah or Magic Pixel more, mm-hmm. you know they want to back up a Brinks truck to Stern. And if Magic Pixel is able to show their chops, could that be a potential uh, roadblock or stumbling block with Zen. who get for with Zen for who, if Stern comes up with who would get it? I have my thoughts, well, but what are your mm-hmm. thoughts? Well, so this is an interesting pickle because they they can they've proven two things that they can produce replicas of real world tables Mm -hmm. and they can they can sort out the emulation required to run the rules in those real world tables albeit rather basic rule emulation um of that era um they've also proven that they can step up their game and do like full video screen tables and yes they're there we've already expressed our our opinions about what those video tables have on the back like on the back glass and on the animated um screen yeah but it's still a blueprint right they, they still show that they can do it so and whereas then is stuck in the 90s with their dmds their overall presentation of pinball um, you know, not even like color DMD, just monochrome, like dot matrix. Um, so it, if I was stern, I would be looking at the less about those aspects because Zen could easily go and step up to that if they mm-hmm. needed to. Mm-hmm. I'd be looking at more the ability to represent the brand of Stern um, in a more positive light with things like animations and overall package polish and things like that. So what Zachariah does, what, what Magic Pixel does well is they churn out tables. But the people like Stern, they have a very specific brand they're trying to promote and i think magic pixel would need to step up a lot if they were going to meet that brand expectation of stern yeah so my thoughts are i agree with exactly what you're saying they've Mm. made it so that they can be a player on the table um that that it's it's not something that stern could just dismiss out of hand and be like, you're not even an option. No, they're, yeah. they're making a case for themselves being an option. Mm-hmm. Where I think they falter, this is again where at games is going to falter. Mm. These are all Android based. They're not going to be able to have the processing power to be able to handle what a stern spike two is going to be required. Oh, well, even I think even Zen would struggle with oh, that sure. at the moment. Their well, engine... Their so, engine's being rewritten for Unreal, but... but and, they the, and, and, and this is the other thing. Point. And so so there's that aspect of things. There's also... Mm. Uh, we know that Stern, and specifically Mel, has had plenty of contact with Stern. Um, mm-hmm. Has had interactions. I don't... There's, there's even photographic evidence on Twitter of him meeting with Gary. Yeah. Can't so, say the same yeah. thing for Ad Games. Um, or Zachary, or, or, Zachary. or Magic Pixel, right, right. 
So is there yeah. even a relationship there to, to go with? Probably not. Don't know. Uh, the third thing is, it seems to me that everything that Zen is doing right now is partially positioning themselves to do the things that Stern wants. Mm -hmm. Can you give some examples of that? Um, in terms of increasing what your pinball engine is, in mm -hmm. terms of being very uh, strict about your licensing, and showing, mm -hmm. proving that you can do licensing with big companies and with a third-party company, i.e. Arcade 1UP. Um, yep. I think that the Legends Pinball, based off of the community and their mods and what they want to do, is not what Stern wants to be seeing. Mm. Um, especially how it's almost encouraged. Yeah, uh, it's like... Yeah, you're right. It is definitely encouraged with the Gat Games community. Like modding is almost built into its DNA. Right, and and considering Stern's concerns with licensing, uh, as we've seen that they came out with their own their new user agreement, um, that they're very much being protective of those licenses. Then mm. I think they're going to want to stick with a company that has a very proven track record, as opposed to. With at games, yes, they've got licensed stuff, but it's also kind of spotty with what their licensing is. Um, they're also not big name licenses. No. They're they're you know essentially the legacy licenses that you know really in the case of Zachariah Magic Pixel has carte blanche to do what they want with it. Right. Um, right. So that's an easy win um, for them. I mean, as far as Taito is not a small license, but no, it's not. But it's also when you think about it, and I here's this kind of interesting just with Space Invaders. I was like, why did I think Space Invaders was an Atari title? And I was like, oh, maybe, maybe it was Taito and then Atari, you know, something happened. And then so then I was kind of looking and I went on the Wikipedia page and everything, and no, in fact, it was Taito was responsible for distributing the game in Japan, and then Bally Midway was responsible for. Space Invaders worldwide, and ah. it wasn't, and it wasn't until the Atari Twenty Six Hundred licensed Space Invaders, which became the basically killer app to sell consoles. They sold two point one million cartridges. Wow, of Space Invaders, That's a lot of, which is cartridges. why I think I associate Space Invaders with Atari, um, and not and Tato. That is a very interesting point you make. That is classic. That is a classic brand awareness market share thing, mm -hmm. right? So you associated that game, even though it would have, you know, Taito branding all over it, yep. you still associated it with the Atari yep. because of its popularity. Yep. So Because where did I play it the most? It? On the console. <laughs> On the console. Yep. So that's, what's, that's what sticks in your mind more. It's not about brands it's not about whatever it's how you experience it as a customer yeah. right yeah, yeah interesting so i just I, I thought that was kind of uh kind of interesting where that was going but mm. um i think this though does open up the opportunity for those other licenses that uh uh at games has if they can prove that hey look what we did with the title license can we do the same with, you know, maybe they do with Capcom or something. I'm not sure what the other licenses that they've, you know, contracted with. Um, yeah. But they could keep Magic Pixel busy for a while. And we already know what Magic Pixel is capable of in terms of... If you if you really think that this is all it's going to be with these EM-style tables, if you don't believe they're going to come out with deluxe <laughs> versions that all of a sudden become you know, full-on late 80s, early 90s style. Uh, yeah, you Strap haven't been paying... because it's going to happen. Yeah, you haven't been paying attention to what, what Magic Pixel does. <laughs> yeah, that's right. This is their, their proof of concept. This is their iteration one mm -hmm. of these designs. Expect more to come, I would think. Yeah, I would I would definitely mm -hmm. expect that. So, And that's that can only be good for at Games customers. Oh, so, absolutely. 
good on them for doing it. Let Magic Pixel do what they're good at and let that community benefit from that experience. Yes. Good stuff. Yes. Yeah. All right. So now let's circle around back to the death of Farsight. <laughs> yeah. Um, because clearly we had thought, and we weren't the only ones that had thought this, that it was going to be Farsight uh, handling the Taito mm. stuff. We had said that we thought that they were just going to be reskinning. Clearly, we're way wrong. Way wrong. And to be honest, very thankful that we were that far off in this particular yes. case. Um, yeah. But this, I think, proves also without a doubt, Farsight is done with pinball. If they yep. can... This is as close as to anything that they would have been you know, producing more pinball. And mm -hmm. that door seems to have been shut. Magic Pixel has stepped in. So yep. what the hell does that mean for the Gottlieb license? Yeah, it's dead in the water. I mean, so is, much it, is it literally going to be just a case of Farsight just holding onto it, holding it ransom? Uh, Probably. So they can actually sell it and try and get some money back. Yeah. Like, they're just going to be, like, licensed sitting on it. Yeah. If it is indeed theirs, and they actually own the intellectual property to it now, which I'm not sure... Nobody My, knows. That would have been, that would have been interesting. <laughs> Nobody deal. understands the Gottlieb licensing or what the agreement no. was or anything of that nature. But it's like, I, I yeah, I they are dead as far as pinball goes now. Yeah. But it's just incredibly yeah. sad then that uh, the Gottlieb would be, like you said, license sitting. Just not, yeah. not getting a chance for another company to go in and swoop in and 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 do, do something with it do something with it cause... such a massive back catalog with Gottlieb mm. like and like not even system 80 a b and you know system 9 no stuff like there's there's like such a amazing back catalog of historic ems in that collection that you you could just release years worth of pinball with that license. Well, and again, they were kings of pinball up until the late 70s. Yeah. I mean, you might even say right up until 1980. They were they were kings right of pinball. Right until they switched to solid state, actually. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> then they sort of lost the plot of it. Um, but, like, as far as their EM designs feel, like, the, in fact, you know, the early, the early, early solid state, like Genie, Star Race, those sort of really early solid state designs they were still good and then they started to do things like bone busters and and just well it was when like when they got bought out by premiere yeah that's when things went bad i mean late the later got lead tables like you know um big hurt that's a fun table um and things like stargate that's also a fun table as well but very formulaic like their their rule system was basically you know two ramps and a big feature um, very much Duttery style, actually, in mm -hmm. the way that they laid out things. So the, the beauty of their their EM era was it was simplistic, it was well laid out, the art was good, and the gameplay feel, they just really had the mechanics right on it. So replicate that in pinball, you, you've got the license to print money, I think, for real pinheads. And the thing is that pinball is moving well and truly into that nostalgia stage now where you could produce a whole pile of EMs and people would buy them. Well, I, th I and, and again, I think At Games has found that audience because mm. if you read the comments of the At Games customers, they love the Zacharia product. Yeah, and, way more than Farsight's. Oh, way, way more. more. Um, yeah. And they don't have an issue with the EM era. I mean, I know some people are like, eh, it's not that great, but they... In general, they like the Zacharia stuff, and so yeah. I'm sure they're cycling through it. Um, and it, and again, depending on how these Taito tables play, uh, you know, can tell a lot about how they would handle Sold State and stuff. But I just, I really think that if anybody should get the Gottlieb license, this is where it should land because I think this Magic is a customer base. Magic Pistol should way. do it, and yeah. it should. I would think that it would be a perfect home for Ad Games. Yep, I, I would agree. Like, I really, I would actually like to see the Gottlieb license surrendered to um, to Magic Pixel. They would, they truly would do it justice, and it would be 
it would be really, really nice. They might have to tweak the game engine for some of the later got leaves, or not even worry about the later got leaves. Just stick with no, the just stick with, with the early solid states and EMs. Yeah, that you've got a real nice collection of games there. Like, yeah, no. it uh, seems like a logical choice to me. Anyway, interesting stuff all the same. Um, mm. Again, if you want to see a video of uh, Space Invaders in action, just it's there on YouTube. You can find it. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't need, really need me to direct you to it. Uh, this coming week, Zen once again has uh, the pinball show. I'm, I can't believe that's come around so quickly. I know, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm yeah. assuming that maybe we'll get a reveal of the third table. I don't know. So Maybe. we'll be tuning in to find out and probably have comments on the next show that we do. Because, again, we're not lined up with <laughs> with the pinball show to be able to give immediate reactions. But that's okay. That's right. Um, so obviously we'll be talking about that. And what else, Jared? Stuff and things, as always. As always. All right, folks. Hey, uh, make sure you, uh, you know, go ahead and... Uh, Maybe follow us there on the uh, the old Twitter. Uh, drop us a message um, and and the like. We like hearing from you guys. Mm. But until next time, sure. Bye bye. Bye bye.